Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Advantest with Xu Li, who's going to talk today about the challenges of moving ATE from the lab to the fab. Xu, what are some of the problems that you're seeing as we start trying to get ATE to move all the way from the design side in the lab to the manufacturing side, uh, which is where ATE traditionally is played? Uh, the one big challenge I see here is during the whole IC bring up process, there is a wall between the design and the testing engineering. Beca because they are in totally different world, they talk in different languages, so um, the communication is extremely difficult until we find a way to fill the gap from the lab to the fab. And part of that is because they really have different concerns, right? Everybody wants to chip the work, but they're looking at it from different sides. So on the design side, they're trying to think about how all the pieces go together. Uh, when you get to the manufacturing, you want to make sure that it yields and the pieces actually function as they're supposed to. Exactly. Um, and uh, from the tester side, we um, not only want to understand uh, to really know the latest technology to build our SOC tester to offer the ever-demanding test challenges. And uh, we also want to understand the design challenges because nowadays for the increasing complexity of the IC and without knowing those uh, designs of the chip, it's very hard for us to really have a solution to test all those blocks inside one chip, which need to work coordinately together. Is the goal actually to speed up the test process, or is it just getting so complex that you're trying to stay even with what you did in the past? Well, of course, the goal is to speed up the IC bring up process. Of course, for the nowadays, the, uh, the chips get more and more complicated, right? But the test time uh, reduction and the time to market requirements is actually more and more strict. That's why our goal is to um, actually to develop the test program um, with a higher quality, but in a shorter period of the time to meet those requirements of the TTM and the TTQ. Why don't you draw this out for us? Yes, sure. What are we looking at here? Um, here we're looking at a very typical IC bring up process. Uh, there are normally five steps for this process, typically. Uh, from the IC design, then to the DFT simulation to do the simulation or replication, and uh, or to do the bench verification. And then uh, test engineers need to develop a test program to generate a test program and do the debugging of the test program. And after that, to do the test program correlation and release test program to the production. The latest step is the high volume manufacturing. Where do you typically run into problems on moving from one stage to the next? What's, what's the big problem area? Um, the one big problem here I want to state out today is actually is here, is between the DFT simulation or bench with the ATE, the first step of ATE to do the test program generation. So because there is a wall, like I said before, right? there is a wall between those two worlds. Before that is more the designer's world, but after that is for the test engineering and is on the ATE. So those two worlds, they are totally different. So um, even before we can do the device test on the automated, uh, automated test equipment, we call ATE, right? We actually, we need to develop the test program for the targeted device and on the targeted ATE. So in order to do that, we actually need to translate a large amount of test contents. Those contents may include the digital ones, like we call patterns, or the bench scripts to do the uh, bench verification on the device and translate to them to ATE and by use ATE specific language. Yes. And uh, also later on, those translated um, uh, test contents need also to be debugged and uh, characterized on ATE. And uh, during all this process, and uh, actually the test engineers need to interfere with the either DFT engineers or simulation team or bench engineers a lot 
But in the reality, like I mentioned, they are in two, two totally different worlds. So the communication is always not that efficient. And imagine that nowadays the company are international, worldwide. Um, different department is actually in different location. So the communication can take a really long time and not that effective. So um, that's why I think the big challenge is how we can fill the gap between those two worlds and uh, um, accelerate the work between those engineers. What's the timing for this? Is this a uh, short term or is this going to be something that you're going to continually evolve over, over time? Um, this, uh, this is a very challenging stuff to do. So I would say this is a journey of exploration and discovery. In the past when you did this, it was almost a brute force type of translation, right? Is this going to be automated as we go forward and, and more flexible? Yes, ideally, it's, like, uh, it's either automate the process or make the communication simpler by using some tools. There's no straight line between these two worlds. How do we bridge these two worlds, at least in the short term, and then where do we go after that? Um, so uh, take the DFT as an example. So DFT simulation, how to get to the ATE, right? So this, uh, this uh, illustrates a typical working process for both DFT side and the ATE side. So for DFT engineers, they normally use EDA tools to do the simulation. And after they have done that, they generate a certain format of the test contents, say patterns, for example, style, file, Wego file, or VCD, EVCD files. Well, for the ATE side, once they, got, uh, once they get those uh, patterns in a, a format that ATE cannot recognize, first step, they need to translate, they need to convert those patterns from the EDA format to the test format. And then they can generate the test program by running those patterns online to do the debug and do the data log. And these are the typical process, but there are a lot of issues going to happen during the whole process from the very beginning to the end. For example, the pattern can easily get errors during conversion stage, or even they can be converted very effectively and uh, uh, correctly, they may face the errors while doing the online execution. Once the test engineers see those kind of errors or invalid patterns, they have no idea what happened because they don't understand the content of those patterns. Those are from the designer's idea. So what they can do is go back to check with the DFT engineers or simulation team to ask about what is wrong with the pattern. And then the simulation team can take a further look about the patterns. And they, when they figure out what's wrong with the pattern, they regenerate the pattern and send it to the test engineer again. And then the process will go over and over, especially in some real case. One pattern can take several weeks to months to get solved. And right now, currently, the two different groups, they normally use either FTP or email doing the communication, especially uh, those teams may in different location. And this process can really take a long time. Let's drill down a little bit into how you bridge these two worlds. In a common case, sometimes test engineers need to invite the DFT engineer to sit together with them in front of the tester in order to have the things move forward. Why? Because test engineers, they understand how to operate the tester, use the tester software, while DFT engineers cannot. But DFT engineers, they know what's happening in the pattern once they see some errors in the pattern, right? That's why they need to work together. So actually, here is the thing. DFT engineers, they actually are the person who knows patterns so well. But what holds them back? to make a first time write a pattern on the ATE directly because they don't know how to use the ATE. If there is a way to enable DFT engineers to work actually still in their world, but to actually operate the ATE indirectly, so they can send a pattern to ATE directly, but see the result 
from the ATE directly without knowing how to use the ATE software, that's going to be an ideal way for them. And uh, Does it get harder as you start breaking this down even further? Because it's not just digital chips anymore. Now it's digital plus mixed signal plus analog. And a lot of the sensors that are coming out are actually analog. Yes, uh, for mixed signal and RF, because they are using benchtop uh, instruments, so the situation is uh, slightly different. What are we looking at here? Um, this is a typical process uh, about the device bring up and the characterization for mixed signal and the RF testing. So they use the bench environment, which means they use a lot of what uh, we call the benchtop instruments in order to do that. Um, and uh, for the language-wise, they use scripts in order to do that. And the scripts, typically, we have TCL Tico, Python, LabVIEW, and the, the function of those scripts, so one is actually control the device to set their internal registers to set the device into a certain stage so the device can be ready to do the testing. And another function is to control those different benchtop instruments. So you can imagine if there are um, different type of benchtop in instruments involved, you may need to use different scripts in order to control them to do the test. While later on, in order to go to the production, you need to translate those test contents using by test scripts to the ATE language. So what are the challenges there? The challenges are, first, um, if you want to debug on ATE with bench scripts, it's not native. And uh, secondly, you, it's very hard to generate native test program on the tester from the scripts. We don't have those automated tools to do that. And the third one is the, the bench engineers, they don't know how to use ATE. They know they are very familiar with the bench top instrument, but ATE is a totally different thing for them. So in order for them to actually see the result on the ATE, they also need to cooperate closely with the test engineers to do so. This is a lot of people working together. It, it has to be driven to some extent top down as opposed to the different groups, right? Yes. So uh, if we have a layer between those two worlds and can enable the same test scripts to be run on the ATE, that's going to be ideal. Shui, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you, Ed.